chronic lymphocytic leukemia is the most uh, frequent leukemia in, uh, in industrialized countries. And uh, we have been studying this disease during the last six years, more or less, and we have been sequencing the genomes of 500 tumors, as well as the DNA from normal uh, cells from the same patients, in order to characterize which are the molecular uh, alterations present in the tumor cells. And from that study, we have been able to identify 60 genes that, when they are mutated, uh, they drive the oncogenic process. And at the same time, we have been doing whole genome sequencing in uh, 150 tumors. And we were wondering whether there are... So, we have genes, but we have like 99% of the mutations, they are in non-coding regions. So our question was, is there any region in the genome that doesn't code for a gene or for the protein that is encoded in the gene that is important for tumor development? And in our study, what we have found is two regions that doesn't code for protein and that are important. They, they are mutated at very high frequency in our set. One of those regions was at the end of, in the three prime untranslated region of a gene called NOTCH1. So usually when you have a gene, you have all the coding region in the different exons, and at the end, you have a stop a signal to stop the translation of that information. And after that, you have the un untranslated region. And after, in that untranslated region, we identify like 14 different tumors harboring exactly the same mutation in the same spot. And that mutation wasn't in a very conserved region of the genome. It wasn't something like very unspecific. And we wonder what, what is going on here. And at the same time that we were sequencing the whole genome, we were also sequencing RNA from the same tumors. And when we look at the uh, effect of that mutation in the RNA, what we found is that uh, that mutation created a splicing acceptor site. And at the same time, as this acceptor site was created, there was one cryptic donor site that was in the coding region that usually, as uh, these mutations are in the last exon, uh, that uh, donor site is not used for anything. But as you create one acceptor site here, what happens in the cell is that you get a splicing between both two. The result is that 500 bases of the RNA are removed, including 150 bases coding for protein. So the resultant protein is 50 residues shorter. And what happens when, this, when you remove the last 50 residues of notch one, that in that particular region, you have one signal that tells the cell uh, how much time this molecule, this protein, should stay in the cell. So notch one is very important for development. So when you have something that is uh, important, you want it to make uh, its function and then stop existing. You don't want it to, to be there uh, telling the cell to proliferate or to differentiate. So when you remove the last 50 residues of notch one, what you get is a stable protein, very stable protein that is the cause of the, the initiation of the tumorigenesis process in these cells. And what is very important is that by knowing the mechanism by which these non-coding mutations are able to produce cancer, you can see that the strategies that are 
right now in development to target notch uh, mutations in the coding region, they can be also applied for the mutations in the non-coding region. Okay, and on the other hand, we were also uh, uh, studying another region of the genome with a high number of mutations. About 10% of uh, our tumors harbor mutations in the middle of nowhere, in the intergenic region. When we looked at uh, what was going on there, what we found is that uh, you had a lot of transcription binding sites for different, uh, for different transcription factors there. And it looked like a, an enhancer, but it wasn't described. So what we did is to study which genes are in the neighborhood and whether the tumors with mutations in, uh, in that particular enhancer uh, show any difference in expression between uh, tumors without mutations and tumors with mutations. So we studied the genes in the neighborhood and only one gene show statistically significant uh, changes in expression. And that gene was PAX5. And PAX5, well, its expression was reduced when, the, when, uh, when you have mutations in this enhancer. And PAX5 is a very important transcription factor in B cell development. Uh, in order to confirm that this was really the mechanism by which these mutations in non-coding region were affecting the expression of PAX5, what we did was to use genome engineering, so genome editing, in order to remove from cells that particular piece of DNA, that enhancer, and we saw that effectively the expression, the expression of PAX5 was reduced. And if we introduced in cells the same mutations that we found in patients, also it was reduced. So what does it mean, uh, this information, that uh, mutations in non-coding region, so the, the genome is still, is, is very large, and, and we still don't understand very well how it works. We are we more or less know how it works for protein coding genes, but the rest of the genome, that is like 98% of the genome, it's still difficult to figure out which part of that, uh, of that DNA is important for disease or for cancer, and which part is not. And by using these strategies, we have been able to uh, identify two non-coding regions that are very important for CLL development. Yes, yes, until now the only uh, example of non mutations in non-coding DNA that were known were in the telomerase gene, in the promoter region of the telomerase gene. So when you have mutations there, you get a uh, higher expression of the telomerase that is important for, for tumor cells. And, and those mutations are very important or, or very frequent in melanoma as well as in liver cancer. But for example, in CLL, we, we don't have that kind of, of mutation. But what we have found with the NOTCH1 mutations is a new way in which you can modify the function of a gene by creating acceptor sites outside of the coding region. Uh, with uh, now in the TCGA uh, uh, project, as well as in the ICGC, International Cancer Genome Project, we are generated, generating thousands of genomes. And what uh, we are trying to do is to identify more mutations in non-coding regions. We, we we are pretty much sure that there are going to be some mutations that are important in non-coding regions, although most of the important mutations are in coding regions. But um, what our study shows is that as important as it is, the analysis of big data, it is also very important to perform 
functional studies to validate your, your in silico findings. So in the, in the project, we are people from very different backgrounds. You have clinicians, you have molecular biologists, bioinformaticians, some statisticians, and all together we are analyzing all those data in order to extract as much information as we can in order to understand how the oncogenic process starts in the cell. Another important thing that I, I forgot to mention is that uh, NOTCH1 is the most frequently mutated gene in CLL and is a bad prognosis uh, uh, gene. So patients with mutations in that gene usually have a poor prognosis and also a higher risk of transforming into uh, uh, malignant lymphoma. Uh, and what we have found is that one quarter of the patients with mutations in NOTCH1 have mutations in non-coding regions. And that's very important because, as you know, uh, right now, and it's going to be adopted worldwide in the next few years, uh, most of the tumors will be sequenced in order to uh, identify which is the prognosis or which is the best treatment for this kind of tumor. And if you are not, if you are losing one quarter of the patients because you are only looking at coding regions, uh, that's very important. So our, um, our main conclusion here is that by performing whole genome sequencing and integration analysis, uh, we have been able to identify many mutations and basically we think that with the 500 patients that we have sequenced, we have uncovered the most important genes that are uh, mutated in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and that um, establish the basis for personalized medicine that is going to be the, the standard care role in the next few years. Well, uh, right now what we have been doing is uh, basically uh, to, to clear up uh, the, uh, it's like if you are in a forest and, and you try to clear up all the vegetation in order to see where the, the, the trees are. And with that information, now it starts another stage in the study of, of, of cancer genomics that is going to be more related to the clinic in order to see from the genes that we have uncovered here, which ones have a clinical significance. And uh, probably in the next two years or three years, we are going to see a lot of information coming out from those studies based on the genes that we have uncovered in this study that we are presenting in this conference.